Crop News, brought to you by the Kansas Association of Wheat Growers and Kansas Wheat Commission. Together, we are Kansas Wheat. Jason, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, conservation and drought management, do they go hand to hand or, or are they two separate issues that you have to deal with? Uh, to some degree, they're two separate issues. Um, I think they do go hand in hand to some degree. Depends how severe and long the drought is. I think in terms of no tillage, use of cover crops, um, I, I think having residue on the ground um, provides to some degree for a short period of time in drought conditions when we don't have rain. Um, it's keeping that, one, preventing heat and the sun from evaporating moisture that's getting in the soil and keeping that soil, one, keeping soil moisture mm -hmm. in the soil um, available for the plants. Um, and not evaporating off. And I think that's probably one of the biggest protections is um, from drought. And so, um, and as well as providing maybe uh, additional protections for pests and diseases that may arise during a drought period um, and helping protect uh, again. And, and a lot of this is kind of tied in with that residue. Mm -hmm. I, I think on the other hand, um, as we've seen this year with such a persistent drought, um, what we tend to see is that this is impacting every system and um, I think um, we're going to see impacts all across the board. And so I think while conservation systems and conservation practices like no-till and stuff provide that protection um, and they'll give us some type, hopefully some type of boost um, in what we'd see under a con more conventional tillage system, I think, um, I think what's going to happen is we're still going to see the impact um, and so uh, we, we still might see losses. And from a long-term or a prolonged or severe drought. And so um, it's kind of that short-term drought protection that those conservation systems are really providing us um, year to year. And so they're reducing that variability um, year to year as well. Well, as no-till starts to, to really kind of gain a foothold here in the state of Kansas, maintaining that topsoil health, I mean, again, that kind of goes into the conservation and managing drought conditions. Yeah, and, and we want to maintain that. I think in terms of um, when we do get water, uh, one thing that um, that soil, the no-till does in improving that soil health is improves the uh, infiltration capabilities of the soils and helping keep that water there. Um, and I think the ability, so when we do get rain, maybe it, it helps provide it for a little bit longer period of time. Um, and so that that's the idea in terms of, I, I think this year is just an exception. I think we're, last year and this year, we're in an exceptional drought period. And um, so conservation systems, yeah, they're gonna provide that soil health, that aggregate structure we need, the additional carbon sequestration that gonna help keep nutrients and stuff in the soil um, and build our soil health. Hopefully then building soil productivity over time and improving our cash crop yields and stuff. Is this something that, is this something that you, could flop back and forth from between dry years versus uh, a wetter year? Or is this something that once you put in place, you should probably stick with? Yeah, so so once you adopt a conservation system, I think it's something you want to stick with. Um, the problem what we see is, so if you did continuous no-till um, for three, four years and then go till the soil, disc it, chisel, whatever, um, you're losing some of the benefits you've gained in that topsoil layer. Um, I, and so we lose some of the benefits by breaking up the soil. And so uh, we, we kind of go backwards. It's not that we lose all the benefits that we've gained, um, we go backwards. If you continue to till, then you start to revert back to what you, the original conditions of your soil. So I think we lose the soil health and the, the benefits, the environmental benefits, the productivity benefits that we gained, um, and we increase that susceptibility to soil erosion again. So I, I think it's something we want to think long term. And ideally it's something we want to adapt our systems to because I think that's kind of the route we're heading um, with, um, especially with the variability in weather that we're seeing. Um, and, um, and so it, it includes not just tillage, but it's thinking about, rethinking about our rotations, thinking about other conservation practices that help um, further improve soil, um, further improve cash crop productivity work better for dry land versus irrigated? Um, I think it can work for both. I think for dry land we tend to see it in dry land but I think it would also work very well for irrigated systems especially with water um, water depleting in the mm -hmm. aquifer um, and obviously with the dr short-term droughts period conditions we've been having over the last few years I think that's something that we gain those benefits um, we, we get some uh, short-term drought protection but as well as um, I think within irrigated systems it can help manage water conservation a lot better in, 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 within the conservation systems. 